Holy Spirit, please fulfill, touch our life and give us meaning in life. In the name of Jesus, we pray that every sadness will turn to joy before we leave. Every sickness here will be touched by the Holy Ghost. We touch in asking the Holy Spirit that He will reveal Himself this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, in our midst, we will feel His presence and touch souls in this house. Lift up your voice and invite Him here and say, Holy Ghost, please take control of this morning service manamo shadaba and if you can you can speak in tongues make the mo kon de ke ten te ke te rade mo ko shada ma ande blo si rade kon de le mer bo shadaba raba bala bo ta de bo shadaba raba jesus binimo we pray let your spirit be in our midst this morning let your power be in our midst this morning oh lord jesus we invite you into our lives Holy Ghost, we invite you into our life this morning. We invite you into this meeting. Spirit of the living God, we invite you into this meeting. This meeting is all about Jesus. It is all about you, Lord. We invite you into our midst. Holy Ghost, we invite you into our midst. Holy Ghost, we invite you into our midst. Spirit of the living God, we invite you into our midst. Madebo Shandalaba, Riba Kalabori, Indelebe Shanda, Rabba Kadagadaba, Rimandebo Shandalaba, Andeleboria Manaboriaba, Rakadaba, Yandabalebo Shandaba, Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, Mandebo Shandabadaba, Rimanabo Rebre. We have come once again, Holy Ghost. We have come once again, Holy Ghost. We invite you into our midst. You want to lift up your hands and let's take this song, even as we bring our prayer to your close. Just lift up your hands and expect that He will drop it on you, the Spirit, this morning. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to say. With power to say. This morning, there is only one name with power to save. There is only one name. Sing it, there is only one name. There is only one name. With power to say, with power to say. This morning, with power to say, with power to say. The name is Jesus, oh Lord God. Jesus, He champion, He reigns. Forevermore, we reign forevermore, forevermore. Our God is born in our God. Oh, He is champion. Oh, He reign. for sparing our one life once again and for bringing us to your presence, O Lord. We acknowledge that it is all the grace of God and the mercy of God that is holding this church and individuals together. And we will never forget God to give you praise and everything that you do in our life, every minute, every second, God. To you all praise and all glory and all honor too in the name of Jesus this morning. In our gathering, we acknowledge Jesus, the only champion, O oh God. 
And we magnify you and thank you for what you've done and for what you continue to do in our lives, to God. We bless you and thank you for your presence is already here. And we know we'll never live here the same as we came. We'll be touched and we'll live here happy. We'll live here excited. We'll live here joy. We'll live here strengthened. We'll live here empowered to go, oh God, and affect our sphere to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came and died for us, but resurrected on the third day, and is seated at the right side of God, interceding for us. May his name only be praised. Glory be to Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are continuing in worship to the Most High God. Shall we please turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21 from verse 1. So we are taking verse 1, just the first part of verse 1. Then we move to verses 8 and 9. Matthew chapter 21, the first part of verse 1, then verses 8 and 9. From the New International Version. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, on the Mount of Olives. From verse 8, a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday. And on Palm Sunday, we commemorate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And that, of course, is the bedrock of our salvation as Christians. If Jesus hadn't entered Jerusalem, there wouldn't have been his death, let alone the resurrection that has given us salvation. And the scripture says, when he entered into Jerusalem, the crowds spread their cloaks on the floor. They gave their best, that is to the best of my knowledge, they gave their best by spreading their cloaks on the floor in adoration of Jesus. They waved palm fronds. Waving palm fronds signifies victory. It signifies triumph. For the people, they had not even tasted of the salvation. They did all these in, in anticipation that Jesus was going to win the victory for them. But for you and I, for you and I, praise be to Jesus that we have tasted of the salvation of Jesus. And that is why you and I are seated here this morning. So this morning I want to inspire you and give your best unto God. What have you brought to God this morning? What have you brought? If for nothing at all, he needs your heart. A clean heart of worship. Give it unto him this morning. Shall we please be on our feet? Lay my under a basu cabala bahande yakabarushan. Lay cabari under a bosi cabala bayanda cabolo bosi cabale bayanda ramayande malun dolo bosi cabale bayanda le basi cabala bayanda ramamai. Re cabali bayanda lo bosi cabale bayanda le bazanda rabai. Kaberi yanda le mazanda rabai. Hosanna! Blessed be the rock, and may the God of our salvation be exalted. exalted. Hosanna! Oh, blessed be the rock, and may the God of our salvation be exalted. exalted. Oh, oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify, oh, magnify 
agency. Here comes the Prince of Peace. Oh, he comes. Oh, he
we sing Hosanna to you this morning. We have every cause to do that. For Lord, we are living testimonies of the salvation that you have wrought for us. This morning, your saints, we spread our choicest garments to you, Lord, and we wave palm fronts unto you. We adore you, Lord God. We say Hosanna to you in the highest. You, Lord, who was and is and is to come. Be exalted this morning. Be exalted in our midst. Be exalted in our hearts, Lord. Be exalted. We bow to you, Lord, and we say Hosanna to you now and forever in Jesus name Amen Hallelujah Dearly beloved as we wait for our coordinators, Bible study coordinators let us know that today's service uh, we may have some visitors joining us uh, so maybe right after Bible study you will see that arrangement a new arrangement certain arrangement has been made please comply and really support our protocol team to make that arrangement we'll be joined by the chairman of the church and some neck members of gpcc and christian council uh, and some dignitaries so please be aware we pasted it late uh, last night that the service will be joined by our dear chairman and some dignitaries so please comply thank you Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are kindly um, breaking into our Bible study groups. It's time for Bible study. Today we are treating week 11 of the Bible study outline, page 36. The topic is understanding Christ's likeness and the impact of it. Understanding Christ's likeness and its impact. So in view of the chairman's visits and the protocols being observed, I've been directed to ask the Oyarifa group, right, where Auntie Kakari is sitting, to leave the first row and start the arrangement from the second row. Thank you very much. We have about 30 minutes to do so. Thank you. God bless you.
Have you seen in there, or what comment can you give, or any commentary on, on, on the text we just finished reading? Second Corinthians 3, 9 to 18. Just for me to be sure that you were following the discussions or the reading of the Bible or the scriptures. Yes, we want to start. I just need two comments. Yes, members. You know, I will not let it pass, but you know, this one, that's for that one, is normal in our studies. We always comment. So, yes, have you seen something you want to comment? Yes. Are you there? Okay. That I want to touch on. Okay. I'm giving you one more minute. <laughs> one minute. Please, then I'll call him. So, if I don't get two people, I'll call him because it's the essence of the Bible studies. 2 Corinthians 3, 9 to 18. Any comment on that? Yes, please. Okay. To end up, please, um, from the verse 15. And then let me hear your, your voice. So. It's from verse 15 to um, 16. It says, even, even to this day, when Moses, is, Mo, when Moses is read, a veil covers their heart. But then whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Spirit, the Lord is the Spirit and the end. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Okay. So after the veil is taken away, there is freedom. Okay. That means so when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? It's taken away. When we turn to the Lord, that veil that was covering us. All right, so we want to take the introduction. Who will help us with the introduction? Yeah. Introduction. Hey, do we all have the outline and our Bible says something? Sister, just help us with the introduction. Where is the other microphone? Hello. Introduction. God has desired that humanity will have his likeness right from creation. Thus, he created humanity in his image and likeness. You can't, yes. Sorry. Yeah, if you can, please kindly get up and face okay. them like I'm doing. And then read into the microphone so that our... Okay. Introduction. God has desired that humanity will have his likeness right from creation. Thus, he created humanity in his image and likeness. Unfortunately, at the fall, humanity fell short of the glory of God and lost his likeness in them. Through the vicarious work of Christ, God is at work restoring all who, came, who come to faith by accepting the redemptive work of Christ to become like Christ, who is the explicit image of God. In today's study, we will focus on understanding what it means to be like Christ and its impact on our Christian work. Amen. Thank you very much for the reading. So now we want to combine the memory verse and then the main text, or even add the introduction to it. What impact did you, what did you get from these readings? 
let, let's, let's catch something from the passages that we have just read. Hello, any understanding? Or how do we understand the, the main topic? Understanding Christ-likeness and its impact. Uh -huh. In simple terms, in your own understanding, how will you explain that? Living a Christ-like life. Take the microphone, please. And yeah. Living a Christ-like life. Living a Christ-like life. Any other opinion? Okay, I also say that we've been loved. God loved us. Therefore, we should also express the same love to others. Just as we've received of Christ, we should also give same love to others. All right, thank you. But if, if we say that Christ's likeness, Christ's likeness, what are we saying? Understanding Christ's likeness and its impact. So what are we trying to say? Pastor, can I speak to you? Yes, speak to you. All your actions and your, your attitude will show, say, what you want. Christ is in you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any other understanding of the topic? Most importantly, then we can do justice to the passage that we read. Understanding Christ likeness. If we say Christ likeness, what are we trying to say? Christ likeness. Any view that we move? Sister Dockers, yes. No, use the microphone. Christ likeness. What does um, it mean? Just that. It, it means uh, living like Christ and going by its standard. Okay. Yes. Living like Christ and going by his standard. Any other view or we move? Now let's come down to the passages that we read. We first read from 2 Corinthians 3, 9 through to 18. And then the memory verse also taken from Ephesians 5, 1 to 2. The introduction, any striking thing that you got from all these passages in relation to the topic under discussion this morning? So in the introduction, there's, there's, there is a sentence that does he created humanity in his image and likeness. Yes. Anyone, can anyone speak to that? Auntie Constance. God created us in his image and in his likeness, as the uh, Bible talk, talks about. And... God wants us to live like him. But unfortunately, 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 the devil has taken part of us and so we, we are not living like him. And so the Bible is encouraging us and telling us that we should live a Christ-like life so that God's image will be imparted on us. All right, thank you. Okay, so I think we can look at the questions for discussion. The first one says that, Thank what does the more glorious ministry bring to the believer? The more glorious ministry, what does it bring to the believer? A clue is from verse 9 of Second Corinthians 3. Are we together? He said, today you are too quiet for my liking. We are discussing together. No answer is wrong. It's okay. Yes, sir. Please pass the microphone. The more glorious ministry brings righteousness. All right. Righteousness. All right, can we take the verse 9? Can we read the, uh, the scripture? Verse 9 of 2 Corinthians 3. Use the microphone. 
if the ministry that condemns men is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? All right. Thank you. Any other opinion? What does the more glorious ministry bring to the believer? We say righteousness. Yeah? We all agree or oh, there is any contention to that. What does the more glorious ministry we're talking about bring to the believer? Or what does it bring to you as a believer? Hello? Righteousness. Yeah? We all agree. Okay. Redemption. All right. Thank you. Second one says, how is the veil of the fading radiance removed? The veil of the fading radiance, how is it removed? Yes, 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 yes. We are discussing. Or should we be mentioning names? Should we start mentioning names? So the scripture is, the verse is even part of it. So if you don't know, you quickly refer. So now we make progress. Uh -huh. and, 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 and say it in your own words. You may not have to um, quote verbatim. Okay. How was the veil or the veil of the fading radiance removed? How was it removed? Verse... 14b. Any idea? Now I'll mention it. Sister Emilia, how was the veil removed? She, she wants to try. Yes. Did we get a verse 14? Or should it be read first? Yes, yes let, let's read the verse 14 and see how the veil was removed. If you want oh. to speak, ensure you have the microphone with you so that our friends on the social media space can also... Okay, have. 14 says that, but their minds were made down. For to this day, we the can't same. Hear you, Rita. Yeah. Nobody can hear you. Fourteen says that. Is it okay now? Go ahead. But their minds were made down. For to this day, the same veil remains. When the old covenant is read, it has not been removed because only Christ is taken away. Amen. Only. Christ is taken away. Amen. Okay. Is the verse clear? Is the be only clear, or we read the whole 14. The whole 14. It's not clear. Kindly read, read verse 14. Is that the whole verse 14? Yes. Right? All right, so in, in your understanding of that verse, how was the veil that faced away removed? Please give the microphone to. According to the verse 14, it says only in Christ was the veil removed. Um, so I think that's where I didn't get at the end. But then from that, it says, um, let me read the B. Um. <laughs> okay. But their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is, is read. It okay. has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Uh -huh. Only in Christ was that veil that was fading away, taken away. Is, is that the understanding we have? Okay. So the old veil that fades away can only be taken away when you are in Christ. Or by the power of salvation in Christ. Amen. Amen. Number three. What is your understanding of verse 18 in light of being Christ-like? Verse 18. Who reads the verse 18 for us, please? Uh, we want another person to read 2 Corinthians 
318. Um, maybe our sister Linda wants to read that. Yes. Sister Linda. 2 Corinthians, just the verse 8, in the very last one. You open your Bibles first as we come. How or what is your understanding? So this one is personal, all right? It's individual. How do you understand the verse 18 in the light of being Christ-like? So as we read the verse 18, each and every one of us is going to tell us how you understand that verse. Verse 18, 2 Corinthians 3. Have you gotten it? So use the microphone and read to all of us to hear. Okay, if you don't want, maybe we'll go and come back to you. Auntie Constance wants to read as Sister Linda prepares for another. Yes. Second Corinthians 18. No, 3 verse 3, 18. 18. 3 18. All of us then reflect the glory of the Lord with uncovered faces. And that same glory coming from the Lord, who is the Spirit, transforms us into his likeness in an ever greater degree of glory. Amen. All right. So the question stands. How do you understand this passage in light of being Christ-like? Yeah, Sister Joy. Sister Joyce is at the back there. Can we pass the microphone to her? Pass the microphone to her, please. Hallelujah. Please, if we say um, the, um, the veil is, um, is on veil, it means... When you come to Christ, when you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that veil of me being a sinner is unveiled. It is taken away. Now the glory of God is resting upon you because you are a child of God. You've been bought with the blood of Jesus. You are no more a sinner. Okay. You are a righteous person. And that righteous person is a glorious person. You are living that glorious life. So now that veil is unveiled. It is no more there. Okay. And so, so when you read the verse 18, the verse 14, he said, um, when, you read the most, when you read the Old Testament, um, the old veil comes, the veil of Moses comes. But when you read the New Testament, when you come to the new, newness of Christ, you see that the veil is unveiled. You are no more a sinner. So my understanding is, um, the glory that we have come in, that is Christ. Christ Jesus that we have. That is the glorious life that we are living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much for that thought. Any other one? Who else wants to share opinion? Yes, there is. Yeah. Uh, what the passage means is that the entrance of God's word gives us light. So it's like when the veil is taken away, you've seen light. The word has uh, come to you that now you've been exposed to light, which is uh, giving you more this thing to share on God's way. That before that, you were in, groping in darkness. But now that uh, you've heard the word, it has uh, waken you up. It has given you light. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Any other opinion? But before we take any other thought, so just that, that if you read the passage carefully, you, you will realize that Christ Jesus was described with certain adjectives in that very passage. So let's, let's look at it very carefully. And now that we are saying that we are Christ-like, we are being asked, that in light of that passage, so what are we now? How do you put yourself side by side with what is being said about Christ vis-a-vis -vis what you are now? Because if Christ, the original man, is something, and we said in the beginning that if you say Christ-like or something like, it means that 
you have assumed the nature of what light you are. Are, are we together? So if we are saying now that how do we see ourselves as Christ-like in light of that passage? Then it means that the passage is saying something about Christ, which we have to assume. Bible study teachers, we have about five minutes more to close. Yes. Are we together? So, um, Auntie Constant, if you can please read the verse 18 again. Let's fish out what is being said about Christ, and then we can know what we are now in terms of we being Christ-like. Are we together? Okay, so let's take that again. All of us. All of us. Reflect the glory of the Lord. We reflect the glory of the Lord. With uncovered faces. With uncovered faces. And that same glory. That same glory Lord, that comes from the Lord. Who is the Spirit. Who is the Spirit. Transforms us into his likeness in an ever greater degree of glory. Okay, so is that clear? So what are we talking about now? So if we want to put ourselves as Christ-like in context of this scripture, what are we? What are we showing forth? Yes, I think that makes the question clearer for. Who want to attempt that? Yes, go ahead. Anything you are comfortable with? We go. What does it mean? Yes. You so it. Uh -huh. you, you go inside it again. As a Christian, anyone be in Kitten Kitty you'll be doing it. Peter, I think we take our last thoughts from you. Okay, so <clears throat> talking about Christ being the light. So, he is light. So, since we, we are also unveiled, meaning that we are also light, meaning that we are going to exhibit his nature, which is him being light here in the person. Amen. So, in that view, we'll take the introduction, then we go on, I think. The five minutes is up, eh? Uh, conclusion, sorry. To be Christ-like is to resemble Christ, having his nature fruit of the spirit and living by his standards it is the f i think time is up eh? so thank you for the study enjoy the rest of this the service thank you Be, Be exalted, O Lord, Lord our God. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up, up your, your name. name with our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. We exalt you, we exalt. Be exalted, O oh Lord, Lord our God. God. Hosanna in the high. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. Our hearts are full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt
with our hearts filled with praise. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Hosanna in the
service is a precursor to what will be happening during the Easter. I have a strong conviction that this Easter will be one of the best you have ever celebrated. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Oh, hallelujah. Preaching to us this morning and preparing our hearts for triumphant entry 4 p.m. and Easter convention beginning from Thursday evening here at the doom, beloved, is Elder Alfred London. Praise the Lord and good morning, saints. 
thanks to the leadership for giving me this opportunity. Today, my, my task is quite simple. And we are going to spend a large proportion of this service praying in preparation for the Easter Convention. But I'm supposed to also bring your attention to how we should partake in this convention and why we should and how our hearts should be tuned up to what the Lord has in store for us. So my topic today is Easter Booster, Easter Booster, reviving our faith, Easter Booster. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19, and please uh, pay attention to certain things that we will need to highlight as we go along. It says, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have, been, who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Most to be pitied. I believe that we have a good reason for celebrating Easter. And... Um, Sometimes we go through the motions of this season without really understanding why it's been set apart for that. We don't understand why we do Easter. Some of us have not taken a close look at the thing because we've been doing it by rote all over the years and we don't really do deep thinking and reflection about the message of Easter. Sometimes we need to recognize that knowledge is indeed power. Knowledge is power. But lack of knowledge or ignorance is something that we have not considered. It is weakness. It is disarmament. It is um, grievous loss when you don't have knowledge. It is perishing in the face of um, lies and doubts and distractions. You see, sometimes we, we profess our Christianity and we are not able to defend it. Imagine if you were walking about and talking to somebody or even singing the song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And then an agnostic happens to be near you and asks you the question, but what is amazing about grace? What answer would you give? What is amazing about grace? Can you, can you, on an occasion like that, use the Easter message to throw more light on the doctrine of grace? How many of us here can use Easter to convict somebody about God's grace? We ought to know what we are doing and why we are here. So today, today we are going to look at why Easter and why we should be a, a, a cheered up, and why we should be eager to go through this season, prepared in heart and mind for it. I want to start by sharing a few things with you about what Easter is not, so that when I begin to talk about what Easter is, we can have a free mind about focusing on that aspect. You see, uh, Easter is not the season for us to indulge in unbridled buffoonery on social media. It is not that season. Easter is not a season for picnics and, uh, and holidays and reveries and binges. Easter is not for us to 
get into excesses. Isa is not even about traveling to your own hometown. It's not kwa'u, kwa'u. <laughs> Easter is more serious than that. It has more global implications than tourists, a few tourists coming around to, to do paragliding on the mountain. That's not Easter. So some of these distractions have taken our minds of what Easter really is. And we've got to be careful about it. If you are not careful, you'll be carried along with this wind of promotion of all these indulgences. And, and please, it is easy to fall prey to the adverse and to the promotions and, and to the noise. But can we stay focused? Can we look at it from a very, very solemn uh, perspective? You know... Sometimes we, we, we should sit down and realize that we never really knew Jesus. And it is time for us to be searching for the Jesus we never knew. Easter, to me, is the greatest event since creation. I remember I read a little story about um, when um, America was able to land on the moon in 1969. It was a major, major global event. And uh, Richard Nixon, the then president of the United States at that time, got so carried away with the magnitude of the success and from the pedestal of presidential heights he started crying about what U.S. has achieved. And he was making a lot of noise. He got so carried away that he said that the landing on the moon is the greatest day since creation. And he was making noise about it. Till Billy Graham drew his attention to the fact that it is never the greatest day since creation. Billy Graham brought him down back on earth by telling him that the greatest season, the greatest event since creation is Christmas and Easter. <laughs> you see, all of it is centered about Jesus. The birth of Jesus Christ and the death of Jesus Christ. It's, that's all that is, is about our history. What, what is today's date? Uh, also answer, what is today's date? No, call the full date. Yes. Hey. <laughs> Elder has gone into a new level. So we will say it's 24th March 2024. But after the 24th March, you see a comma. And then you see 2024. That comma has a meaning. It means 24th March, A.D. 2024. <laughs> now, when, when I switched on my phone this morning, the first burst of light that came off from my, my mobile phone flashed the date. And the date immediately began to hint me that Easter is drawing closer. That is number one. But number two will blow your mind. Number two is that the date is implicitly acknowledging that whatever, no matter what you believe about, about the season we are in, the birth of Jesus Christ was so important that it split history into two. Let me repeat it. The birth of Jesus Christ was so important that it split history into two parts. Everything that has ever happened on this planet Earth falls into a category of before Christ and after Christ. Everything. 
everything. No matter what you do, when you attach a date to something, it's either BC or AD. And that is a fact. But if the birth of Jesus Christ has such global implications and is so globally important, I think also that the death of Jesus Christ will also be as dramatically important. So let's look at what it means when we reflect on the death of Jesus Christ. And by that I mean the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is an eternally important event. Because when you reflect on the death of Jesus Christ, you have to acknowledge that the death was so important that it split eternity into two states of life. Eternal death and eternal life. What a savior. What a man. That man of Calvary. The death of Jesus Christ was so important that it split eternity into two destinations. Suffering without end in hell eternally and joy without end in heaven eternally so when we are celebrating Easter our focus is on the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is the power of Easter the power of Easter is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that is what Easter is celebrating. And that is what we are preparing our hearts for. Let's give glory to God. Oh, shall we rise, please? It is about the death of Jesus Christ. So now, because history is split into two. Our children are also splitting services into two. <laughs> I think we wanted them to wait till we finish the sermon. But the way they are very important in churning out the next generation will give him extra minutes occupied by the children as they triumphantly enter and we sing over our children. I think it makes Pentecostal yeah. sense, isn't it? Yeah, it does. So let's join our children. <laughs> Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the high. The angels are singing, Hosanna. Oh, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. They are singing, oh. Oh, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the high. The angels are singing, Hosanna. Oh, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the the angels are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest The angels are singing Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest
For this wonderful gift, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna to the King that comes in the name of the Lord. Right, so now the second half of the sermon will continue. Let's invite our elder to continue. Amen. We, we thank God for the necessary interruption. So I want to pick up on where I left off. I was saying that the resurrection is central to the Christian faith. It is central to our faith and it confirms Jesus' identity. As the son of God and the one who has been sent as the, as the savior of the world, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ as we celebrate it is a symbol of hope a symbol of redemption is a symbol of a new life life has been bought for us life has been secured for us life has been procured for us and it is time for us to acknowledge this reflect on it and let it lead us into a time for transformational action we need to reflect on the sacrifice of Jesus. We need to renew or reboot or revive our faith in that sacrifice. We need to rejoice in the promise of salvation. So the question is, what must we do at Easter time? What must we do? Anytime it is Easter, it is time for all of us to sit and fix our gaze on the cross. Focus on it. Think about it. See it as something that is the banner that we must lift high. When the children were marching around and were waving the palm fronts, I remember the account of the triumphant entry. A lot of people don't understand this theological aspect of that triumphant entry. 
the people of Israel, the Jews were very keen on searching for somebody who would represent their rebellion against the Romans. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem, they thought it was the opportunity for them to signal to the Romans that we are tired of your rule. And this is our new king, this is our ruler, and this is the one who is coming to lift, lift us up. And this is our flag. So they lifted up the palm fronts and were waving it. This is our flag. You know, the Romans had a tradition of always having a flag. And in their dominion of Israel, they never allowed them to have their own flag. So this is our flag. But I tell you, brothers and sisters, our flag is the cross of Christ. And we must seek to lift it up. We must seek to lift it up. Because on that cross, Jesus made a statement. And, and that statement was not only to one of the other men with him on the cross. It was to all of us. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. Very strong statement. Three men were hanging on the cross. It is significant. That one was taunting him. And the other was recognizing his lordship. But that interaction throws light on the theme of redemption and salvation that is central to Easter. Even at the last moment, a man who was condemned to death and duly paying the price for his criminality and rebellion was snatched from the claws of death. Just by the pronouncement of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, you will be with me in paradise. So, you will see that Jesus was placed among two criminals. That impression is that he being in the center of two criminals, the Romans were indirectly calling him chief criminal. Chief thief. Because he is the middle there. But the Bible prophetically said that he will be identified with sinners and criminals. So prophecy was being fulfilled. And prophecy is still being fulfilled. Anytime we celebrate Easter, it's about our redemption, our salvation. And, and the inclusive nature of Jesus' work of intervention on our behalf. Sacrifice for all people. Regardless of background and our past sins. Sometimes we are quick to condemn people. We are quick to nail them to a cross or the other because of their past life and past actions. But I tell you, on the cross, those two men made statements that points to one major fact of life, our inability to save ourselves. So one of them said, I ain't you the Messiah. Save yourself and save us. <laughs> but he was saying that where I am, I cannot save myself. So unless you save yourself, I cannot be saved. He didn't know that what was happening was, was rather his salvation. You see, I was privileged to have exposure to ministering at the prisons for quite a while. And when you minister to these prisoners, they are a microcosm of our own situation. You see, we are all prisoners here on earth of our own device. You don't have to be in prison to be a prisoner. When, when sin captivates you and holds you bond, in bondage, you are in prison. And working among these prisoners opened my eyes to a few things. You know, my perspective about redemption began to change because in these events, in these uh, outreaches to the prison ministry, I saw the highs and the lows. I remember one of the lowest times was when I was sent into the condemned prison. Condemned prison is prison within prison. If you go to Nsawam, you will see it. And then the first day I was being ushered there, as we were about to enter the condemned prison, I felt a sense of heaviness. There was this corner there that 
had a special tag on it. You know, for a long time, Ghana has not practiced the, uh, the, the art of executing people who are even condemned to death. We have stopped it. But in those days, it was being done. And I saw this corner there, the place was heavy, and there was, a, there was a kind of smell about the place. I'm talking about the stench of death. I asked, what is this place? Oh, this is where we hang the prisoners who are uh, condemned to death. Death stinks. But at the same time, on the flip side of what we are talking about tonight, to, to, uh, this morning, the glorious resurrection. Is fragrance to us. And it must fill our nostrils with hope and great expectation. You go into that condemned cell and you sit with these people who have no hope in life. And because of their state, they are one of the most receptive people to the gospel I've ever met. You preach and they have nothing else but to have the posture of the man on the cross. Save yourself and save me. One day I was preaching at in someone prison. I've been to several prisons, you know. Um, one, of mo- one of the most desolate prisons you can ever be to is the Akusa prisons. My goodness. I've been to whole prisons. I've been to Akusa prisons is desolate. <laughs> and if you do a little bit about prisoner psychology. You see that they are, because they are confined in one space for a long time, they are very bored people. So any small thing excites them. Somebody falls down, they they are shouting about it. (laughs) So one day I was preaching on a, a special service that was held for the prison officers. But because it's a service, they, they brought some of the prisoners to join them because they were the ones who were going to sing to, and conduct part of the service, praises and worship and things. So there were prisoners there. And I was talking to them about the fact of Easter, the fact of reconciliation. And I challenged them. I said, if your job as prison officers is to help the nation reconcile these people back to society, because that's the essence of, of uh, penal, the penal system, isn't it? And you are doing this thing that is divinely instituted. Something that is of God. And you yourself you are not reconciled unto God. What is your message? And it hit hard at them. So not knowing the second in command of the whole in, in someone prison was so touched. That when I made the other call, he got up and he was coming forward. But because I was facing the congregation and he was sitting at the, at the stage behind me, I didn't know that he had gotten up and was coming. All I heard was the prisoners. Hey, hey, hey. And I was like, what, what is happening? And they were saying, said, hey. as they got closer to me, they were shouting, hey. then they got onto their feet. Hey. And I'm like, ah, what is happening? Then I turned and I saw the two I see behind me. I said, yes, sir, two I see. He said, I have come to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. <laughs> but that is a high. Everybody is excited about it. But you see, the gospel of Easter it's for the high and the low. I must confess to you that there are times I've been at the low end. Because one day I preached at in someone's prisons. And the prisoners came forward to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. But there was one prisoner, a, a, a prison officer who was sitting by me. After we had done the altar call and, and they had raised their hands and they had been led through prayer, the prison officer pushed me and said, Open now, that's open now in the crowd. And, and by Opana, he was talking about, at that time, one of the most notorious criminals in Ghana. Very, very notorious. Everybody knows him. And he was in the crowd. He had come forward to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I remember I said, ah, this man too can accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. In fact, I, I didn't like him because of how wicked he was. And I was not happy that he had come to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. (laughs) But I repented. 
Because later on, when we got to do the follow up and counseling, he sat before me and he said, My dear brother, I have done evil things and I'm sorry about it. I saw the power of conviction, the power of reconciliation. I am bringing my message to a close because we want to spend time to pray. But you see, in my rounds in ministry in those cells and to those we call inmates, I realized that no one who meets Jesus is ever the same again. No one. Therefore, I think that Easter is a time that we should boost our faith and remind ourselves of how amazing grace really is. Thank you and God bless you. I want to hand over to Pastor to, to lead us in the time of prayer. We're going to pray and prepare our hearts for the coming Easter. Hallelujah. Shall we rise to our feet? The message of Easter for the salvation of souls. There are highs and there are lows, but the important thing is that the one that looks up to the one that is able to save will receive salvation. Scripture says no one goes to a strong man's house and takes loot except that strong man be bound. For this brief moment, what we are going to do is to pray for the souls that we intend to bring to the fold within this Easter convention. The friend in your office, the neighbor in your community, the member of your family, and even your own children or your parents, who by your own experience and by own dealing with them know that they haven't come to the knowledge of Christ. The Bible says that the people of the world do not have, who do not have Christ have been held in darkness. We are standing in the gap for such persons and we are praying the Lord, by the power in the resurrection of Christ, we break every bondage, holding people by their minds, by their hearts, by their experiences in captivity. And declaring that the word of salvation would find residence. Even as we speak, we will speak with the power of the Holy Ghost. That those we invite even to join us in this convention, just by obeying to enter, they would encounter the saving grace of Christ. For it is not by the eloquence of words, neither is it by the demonstration of human wisdom, but it is by the convicting and the convincing power of the Holy Ghost that men are saved. So raise your voice and with compassion pray for anyone that you know that has a need for the salvation that Jesus gives freely. Father, we thank you for the gift of salvation as we stand before you today. We pray and ask that Lord God Almighty, your power and your dominion would overwhelm the ministry of our family PIWC, even as we observe the Easter period in the convention. Father, we pray in Jesus' name raising every year that will come into a hearing distance of the words we will preach we bring before you every soul that will come into contact with us as we spread ourselves in this convention we pray for everyone that would meet us even on the road in our workplaces so god we declare that lord the saving power of your grace will flow through us the saving virtue of your power would flow through us in Jesus' name. Anyone that has been held bound by any kind of conviction, any doctrine of mind, every experience of life that is holding them bondage and not making it possible for them to respond to the saving power of Christ, in the name of Jesus, we declare salvation, we declare deliverance, and we declare that they are freed from the bondages of darkness, even in the name of Jesus. As we stand today, our voice is clear. That your saving grace will reach all that we extend to him to them in Jesus' name. We declare that this place is sanctified. Our lips are sanctified. Our hands are sanctified. Even those we would only greet. Even by greeting their hands, they would experience grace. They would experience virtue in the mighty name of Jesus. We break every bondage that is holding any man captive. Even because the salvation of our lives is dependent on the blood that was shed on Calvary. As we commemorate these days, oh God, let salvation break forth in this land. Let salvation break forth even in our spheres of operation and influence. That the glory shall be given unto you. You are God. You are God. You are God. You are God. 
I will bless you for being our God. And you are bringing many to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, we will be taking our tithes and offering briefly. And um, I want to invite the royal vessels to come up quickly as we take our tithes and offering. Royal vessels, come quickly. Come quickly. Let's take our tithes and offering and then we would hand over for the next session of our gathering today. Hallelujah. Shall we all be upstanding, please? Yeah, he repo on Amripa. Yeah, he repo on Amripa. Yeah, he repo on Amripa. Oh, yeah, yeah, in Jesus on Amripa. Oh, yeah, he repo on Amripa. Yeah, he repo on Amripa. Hey, yeah, he repo on Amripa. Oh, yo. Hallelujah, yeah, he repo on Amripa. Oh, yo, he. Hey, yeah, he repo on Amripa. Yeah, he repo on Amripa. Hey, yeah, he repo on Oh, yo, he. Hallelujah, yeah, he repo. Yeah, yeah, he repo. Hallelujah, yeah, he repo. Yeah, oh, your head. Hallelujah. Hey, on a ripa, oh, your head. Hey, hallelujah, yeah, he repo. Hey, yeah, on a ripa, yeah, he repo, yeah, he repo. One more time, yeah, he repo. Hey, on a river. Ah, yeah, he repo. On Hallelujah. Hey, on a river. Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he, Jesus. Hallelujah, yeah, he repo. Say, oh, magnify the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Oh, let's say, oh, magnify the Lord. For he is. Oh, Sana, blessed be the rock and made it. Oh, Sana, blessed be the rock. Oh, say, Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Oh, Sana, blessed be the rock. Oh, say, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, Sana, blessed be the rock and made the rock. Oh, Sana. Blessed be the rock and may the rock of my salvation be a Oh, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock and may the rock of my salvation be exalted. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock and may the rock of my salvation be Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallel
Hallelujah. Oh yeah, bet to Hallelujah. Yeah, bet to Hallelujah. Yeah, bet to Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, bet to Hallelujah. Yeah, bet to Hallelujah. 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 Father, we want to bless you and thank you for giving us the chance to give unto your kingdom. Lord, we pray that you bless us, increase us in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, as we have ushered ourselves into the Easter, Jesus will triumph in our lives. The power of the resurrection will be relevant. All the details will be communicated to us on our various platform. But all over the world, in the Church of Pentecost, in Ghana, over 18,000 local assemblies, we are reading a pastoral letter from the chairman of the church. Oh, hallelujah. Dated March 19th, 2024. To all assemblies, the Church of Pentecost worldwide. Dearly beloved, pastoral letter, Easter Convention. For what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance. That Christ died for our sins according to scripture. That he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 3 to 4, the NIV. The power of the assembly of the saints. The celebration of Easter, that is the death, the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ will forever be etched on our memories and marked on the calendar of the Church of Pentecost. Easter is the foundation of Christianity. It is the reason for our confidence in what we believe, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to scriptures, as recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4. Brothers and sisters, because Christ has been raised from the dead, we shall also rise from the dead. Our faith is not futile. Our preaching is not useless. Our witness about God is not false. And our brethren, who have fallen asleep in Christ, are not lost. We have indeed been cleansed from our sins. As we celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ, we need to intentionally share the good news with the people around us. I will therefore... Encourage every member to write down the names of two people you intend to win for Jesus Christ. Commit the two people to prayer and invite them to a place of encounter where we can experience Christ, they can experience Christ themselves. Like the Samaritan woman, let us invite friends, neighbors, families, and even strangers to come and encounter Christ at this year's convention. Encounters often happen in life, impacting, life-transforming environments. And our Easter conventions are no are such environment. Preparation. It is not the mere assembly together that brings the blessings we desire. There is a need to create the necessary atmosphere for God to encounter his people. Said that people should leave every session of the convention of the desire. To return to I take it again. It is not the mere assembling together that brings the blessing we desire. There is a need to create the necessary atmosphere for God to encounter his people. So that people have every session of the convention with the desire to return for the next. Creating the needed environment for people to encounter God is both the responsibility of leadership and worshipers. The only thing distinguishing a Holy Spirit led meeting from any other is the presence of God. I mean the active presence of God. In addition to good organization, leaders and participants need some hard work, hard work, and experience that opens them to go through much prayer and reflection on Christ and what has done for what he has done for us this preparation is necessary for the upcoming convention as it makes worship more fruitful and god honoring 
It is in such an atmosphere that people experience God in unprecedented way. Expectations. God is not an abstract entity. He is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Brothers and sisters, God is a living reality. It is against this backdrop that I encourage you to participate in this year's convention in the company of your two invitees with reverence, faith, boldness, eagerness, expectancy, delight, wholeheartedness, concentration, self-abasement, and above all, a passion to know, a passion to meet and know God as a living father. Come prepare to meet God. Your expectations will not be cut off. Oh, I didn't hear amen. I take it again. Come prepare to meet God. Your expectations will not be cut off. In conclusion, may Christ, the foundation of our Christian faith, the God who really is, meet you at the very point of your need. May your life, your family, your business, and all yours, including your two friends, be transformed to the glory of God forever. God be with you all. Happy Easter. Yours in the service sign. Apostle Eric Kinyamiche, chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thought you, you would clap better than what you are doing now. Wow. We shall put this pastoral letter on all our platforms. Let's read them, read it, meditate on it, and let it be part of our life as we journey through these Easter festivities. Yeah, so the task for us is that at least invite two friends. Prayerfully consider and select them and bring them along in all the sessions both the morning sessions and the evening sessions, and create a needed atmosphere for them to be impacted. I hope we shall do it. Shall we lift our hands and say, Lord, we shall do it. May the Lord honor your promise. Hallelujah. On this note, as communicated to us, we are grateful to God for this wonderful day, Palm Sunday. We are privileged to have our Father, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Eric Kwabena Nyameche, and some dignitaries joining us for this wonderful service. Oh, church, shall we rise up and welcome our father and our team? Oh, hallelujah. On this note, I hand over the next session of the program to the General Secretary of Ghana, Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Apostle Titi Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a privilege to be in your midst. It's always a blessing to be part of this wonderful fellowship. And we thank God so much for his grace. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Please, um, we are thankful to God for this opportunity that he has granted unto us and uh, I want to quickly acknowledge some of the uh, dignitaries and reverend ministers that God has blessed us with we, we are here specifically as the Christian fraternity Church of Pentecost uh, graciously is hosting us and we are launching a prayer um, program campaign um, on the anti-LGBTQI bill. We are people who stand with God. Hallelujah. We are people who are standing with God and we uphold the values of our God. And so the Christian body in Ghana, a lot of the other ecumenical bodies, they are general secretaries and heads. Uh, some we are expecting will be joining us. Others have signified to us that um, they are quite occupied at the moment. So they may send representatives to be here. And indeed, some are here. So we will proceed on that note. But I quickly go on to acknowledge 
some of the fathers and distinguished persons who are here with us. I am Apostle Emmanuel Teti, General Secretary of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. Hallelujah. And the, the president of GPCC obviously needs no introduction in this house. Uh, if you are a member of this assembly, this distinguished PIWC, and I do the exam right now and you fail, uh, there should be a punishment. But we thank God that the president of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, a blessing to the body of Christ in the person of Apostle Eric Nyamiche is also here with us. We thank God so much for his life. Such a great blessing to the body of Christ. Like I mentioned, the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana has indicated to us that other responsibilities has caught up with him. Um, the uh, Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops Conference was actually on his way to this place, but he's had to divert and attend to other calls that he's had from the bosses. So, we are also either going to have him late in the program or he may not be able to come at all. But it gives me also great joy to announce that we have the first vice president of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, who is also the presiding bishop of the Life International Church and the person of Bishop Gordon Kise in the house. God bless you so much, Papa. We are very thankful for your life, first vice president of the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. And then we have other executive council members. We have Pastor Edward Dodu, who is the national leader of the Deeper Life Church and executive council member for GPCC also here with us. We have the presiding bishop of the Perez Chapel International, the presiding bishop of Perez Chapel International, Bishop Oheni Ben Abuaji. God bless you so much, Bishop. Um, we also have in the house the General Superintendent of the Assemblies of God Church, Reverend Dr. Steve Wingham, present with us. Dr. Wingham, God bless you so much. We have a representative of the, from the Methodist Church, Ghana, Methodist Church, Ghana, and the person of Reverend Boa Kofi in the house. Reverend Boa Kofi, God bless you so much. He's representing the presiding bishop of the Methodist Church, Ghana. And so, as you can see, this cuts across uh, churches. It cuts across ecumenical bodies. And we also have coming in with a team, uh, but so far is the only one I know by name. So, please permit me to acknowledge him, then I'll go to our honorable members. We have in the house the evangelist Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete joining us this morning. Reverend, God bless you so much. We are happy to have you in the house. We are happy to have you in the house. Um, I, will, I will invite um, lawyer Fuamwenin, but before he comes, we are blessed this morning to have two honorable members of parliament and they've been very very key in the uh, passage of the um, bill on proper human sexual rights and family values they've been very very instrumental um, we have one of our own uh, dignesses here with us honorable na adole Udo Lesoa, now Udo Lesoa, MP for La Dade Kotopon, MP for La Dade Kotopon, uh, Dickness, Honorable Na Udo Lesoa, MP for La Dade Kotopon. But we also have the leader of the Parliamentary Christian Fellowship, also the MP for Whole West, in the person of Honorable Emmanuel Kwesi Bejra in the house. We, we thank God so much. So at this point, I will humbly invite the Executive Secretary of the Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values, the person of Honorable Lawyer Fo Amwenin, very hardworking, very indefatigable. 
Oh, please, let's celebrate this man. Let's celebrate this man. Let's celebrate this man. God bless you. God bless you. Why don't you tell us something about it? Hallelujah. 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 Men who says of Benny Bonne Nichemi. So, lawyer of audio, if you give us the microphone, we might talk till tomorrow. But also, for I can assure you that here I'm under your authority. So, I will be very brief. Well, fellows of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, we are the ones who have washed our clothes in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. I am beginning with these words because some of you don't know the seriousness of what is happening. Now my father's own church, the Methodist church in England, huh, where John Wesley came from, they are ordaining homosexuals. Where John Wesley came from, they are now ordaining homosexuals. Indeed, if you go to Hyde Park and you want to preach and quote Paul that homosexuality is wrong, you will be arrested. I just want you to capture the seriousness of the matter. So when you hear people say that, oh, it is just two consenting adults doing their own thing, please don't believe them. Just one more example. In the secondary school at Ola, and a lot of secondary schools, and I know you parents know, they are recruiting young girls, giving them 1,500 Ghana cities to recruit more lesbians into a club. Along the coast, uh, from Cape Coast, Abra and all of that, nine-year-old children, nine to 13-year-old, they pick them, they open sebi sebi, a true hormone, no one's a pin to what I show just to see whether there's space so they can bring people to sodomize them. This is not a joke, this is very serious matter. They are bent on destroying our society. Don't let anybody fool you, don't let anybody fool you. And they have built a cabal, they have money, they have influence. They are buying our politicians, our professors, our doctors, everybody. But thanks be to the almighty God that they will not buy those who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. That is why we want to thank Apostle Nyamiche for backing this coalition. That is, this is the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values. We brought together all Christian groups. Ghana Pentecostal Charismatic Council, Cali Bishops Conference, Christian Council of Ghana, put all of us together and we added our Muslims for strategic reasons and our traditional rulers, we brought them along. And for 11 years, we have been contesting this move. But for this coalition, comprehensive sexuality would have been foisted on us. And your four-year-old child, they will teach him that masturbation is a good thing. Because of that, they couldn't bring comprehensive sexuality education. Put your hands together for the Lord. And we are grateful for the support that we've gotten from all our leaders. Especially the Church of Pentecost. So, you have been good to us. And God richly bless you. Let's put our hands together for him. And for all those who have held this. I have my big brother here, Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete. Please put your hands together for this wonderful man of God. And I'm acknowledging him because there are lots of his own friends. I don't want to mention names. When we are pushing and praying, they are quiet. They are mighty men of God. Mighty. But why is he 
How you doing? So we're grateful to great men like you who are baptized and the MPs as well. But for us as a coalition, it is not the law. Hmm? Bible says the letter of the law kill it. It is the law of grace. That is why we are here to launch a prayer and fasting period. For those of us in the Orthodox churches, we are already in the middle of Lent. So we are calling you the Pentecostals and the Charismatics to join us. To offer prayers unto the Lord. Because the theme that we have chosen, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But they are mighty to break through what? Strongholds. Hallelujah. That's why we are here. Just to pray for the president, for the judiciary, for parliament, for the whole country. As we come together to resist this move. And let me end on this revelation that God gave to me. So you will not be afraid. Hallelujah. Three years ago at 4 a.m. as I prayed, the Lord showed me clearly. That this bill that we are taking to parliament. The United Nations will rise against us. Uh, U.S. will rise against us. U.K. will rise against us. But the Lord told me clearly that just as he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the burning furnace, and they could not burn, say at the Lord, he will be with us. Hallelujah. And we will not burn. But he had this again, and this was very clear. So for Penny, you may catch it, I say. Only Ghana fought you physically. No, be our batin and sour Ghana. So, no, one about what how do you say it? The one who will lift his hands against Ghana, he the Lord will lift his hand against them. Hallelujah! Put your hands together for Jesus. That is the purpose of the cross. So, have no fear. Have no fear when you hear from UN, United States, whatever. We are not daring them. But we hope they will not lift a hand against Ghana. Because the God that my father served until he died, that God will rise against those people. Hallelujah. So Penny, Mary, thank you. God bless you so much. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's celebrate Lawyer Fua Mwene in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God so much. God has a way of raising people for every season. He has a way. I mean, the, the zeal and the commitment you see exuding from lawyer for me, that is how he approaches this work. He doesn't care if you want to cut his head. He will say what he has to say. What the Lord has put on his lips, he will tell you. Amen. And I mean, UK can be against us. US can be against us. But if the Lord is for us, if the Lord is on our side, we are more than conquerors. Amen. Hallelujah. We also have with us Reverend Emmanuel Amatefio. Reverend Emmanuel Amatefio is here with us. Papa, God bless you so much. He is part of um, Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tetter's team. We also have as part of the team Prophetess Hilda um, Ashi. Prophetess Hilda Ashi. Prophetess, God bless you so much. Thank you for coming. And we have Reverend Suzanne Graham. Um, I'm not seeing the last one. Yeah. Reverend Suzanne Graham. Graham, all right. And then we have Reverend Atu Roxin. Reverend Atu Roxin also here with us. God bless you so much. And then from the Apostolic Church, a representative from the Apostolic Church sent by the National Headquarters is Pastor Osei Jemfi. Pastor Osei Jemfi is here representing the Apostolic Church General Headquarters. Beloved, we are at a point of launching and uh, the prayer, prayer campaign that we are taking up from today to the 31st of march next week sunday we are launching it today we are thankful unto the lord that in this difficult time he has raised people to stand in the gap he has raised people who will not bow down to bad that the lord has people in the land who stand for righteousness and so we are declaring officially um, seven day period of fasting and sustained prayer from today's Sunday 24th to March 
31st, uh, next Sunday. And we are praying in this way that the Lord will continue to work with our leaders, the leaders of the country. The legislature has done their part. They have passed the bill. We are not going to make any accusation or something. We are praying for the presidency, the executive, everybody in there, that the Lord will work with them just as he worked with the legislature, that this bill will come to full fruition and it's going to be a blessing. Our parliamentarians have worked very hard on this and we are trusting that God will do this with us. He will honor his name. We urge all Christians to be part of it and the chief justice and the judiciary, the speaker of parliament, we know is standing very firmly with us on this bill and we continue to pray to support him. Our Muslim brothers, our Muslim brothers, they are also standing with us in this and so please as we pray, let's be praying for them also that the Lord Jesus Christ is able to touch their hearts and we pray also for the presidency. So on the strength of that and all that lawyer Fuamini has said, I want you to stand with me. Stand, just stand with me. As I declare this seven day prayer and fasting period. Declared, launched in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, let's put our hands together unto the Lord. As I invite our president and chairman of the Church of Pentecost, Apostle Eric Namiche, to take it out from there. Um, please, can I have um, Honorable Bejra and our Honorable Madam? Um, please come back, Moses. Uh, please come back. Um, in the charismatic church, you say, shall we put our hands together for him? <laughs> yes. Um, the agenda for the possessing the nations is to unleash people who are not ministers of the gospel. You saw the passion with which, with which he was talking. I would not, I'm not a lawyer. And so when it comes to agreeing on these things, they will not bring me in them. So when there are lawyers in the church of Pentecost and in the churches, let's raise them Amen. so that they can make good argument and change the land. Now, when they were legislating in parliament, he was there. She was there. And because they are Christians, look at how they have been able to push the bill. And so, ministry should not be left just for the clergy. Not at all. Otherwise, about 99% of Christians will be rendered redundant. Yeah. Ours is to raise people like this. And push them into the sphere. And let them change their spheres. Now, you see, he has come to speak. He also played a role. I'm coming to pray. Yeah. Because if I'd gone to parliament to be part of the argument, they would just, my friend, who are you? I say, I'm uh, Reverend Yamiche. So, uh, and so, yeah. Because you are not part of this group. So please, let us rise and unleash ourselves onto the society and we'll change this nation Amen. hallelujah Amen. now lead us to pray but i'll say two things about the bill and what people say number one people say that they don't care about what goes on in someone's bedroom yeah there should be no responsible elderly Ghanaian who should make this statement nobody you don't care what goes on in people's bedroom listening to Jesus. For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. And whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. So if you don't care what is going on in somebody's bedroom, Jesus said one day it will be revealed. You can't say you don't care. No. And then another thing. People are worried about the punishment that is attached to the law. But see, don't, don't be worried about that. Punishment in itself is an inhibition. Yeah. Yeah. See, in the 50s and the 60s, when these things were crime in the UK and the Western world, 
still I, it is not on record that somebody has been punished for LGBTQ. Yeah. Even though the laws were there. Yeah. Because nobody will go and say that my son is this. So there were pockets of them. But it protected that group, the society, from spreading. Yeah, it stopped it. It's an inhibition. So the laws will be there. Yeah. It will be there. We shall still care for them. Yeah. We shall still care for them. Human rights. If we don't stop this human writing, soon the world will be ungovernable. Because everything will be a right. Until armed robbery will be a right. Now listen. We need to look and live. Look into scripture. The mind of God on his society, on his planet, is the one that we must uphold. Not people's ideas. Not people's ideas. No. Shall we lift up hands now? Let's begin to speak in tongues, those of you who can. Let's begin to pray that God, come down, come down. Come down, oh Lord, come down. And magnify your name. God rules in the affairs of men. May he rule in our nation. Now the bill has gone to where it's supposed to be. The president will have to ascend to it. May the Lord lift up his able hands. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? Oh, Labasana. Brothers, let's love this nation. And let us pray for Ghana. We don't need the Western world to dictate to us. Our God is great. The God of Ghana will take care of us. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Ever since we relied on the Western world for supply, where have we been? Let us now begin to rely on God. After all, the battle is still the loss. Oh, la basande de 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 bakayanda. Bidion da masende bakatanda. Roson de 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 bakiando robosonde. Beka basondo robopolomo sonde de de bakitanda. Sonde ke bayana. We will sing this song together and then I will call on Reverend Dr. Wingham to come and pray. Thy kingdom come, O oh God. Let the reverend ministers Thy come. Thy rule, O oh Christ, Christ, begin. Break with thine iron rod. That's of sin. May scorn thy sacred name and wolves devour thy foe by many deeds of shame. Faith that Christ grows. Thy kingdom come, O oh God. Let's sing oh, along. Yes, sing along. Thy rule, O oh Christ, be here. Break me Some people are saying that what about her church sexuals? What about her adultery? Those who are doing that, they have not formed any organization. They are not telling us, this is my headquarters. They don't have an anthem. So don't bring that argument in. I'm only praying the day they will allow me to be part of this argument. Those who are committing adultery, have you, have, do they have a society? Do you know they are leader? Are they looking for an office to establish themselves? Now listen. The day you pay attention to the anthem of this LGBTQ, 
you will fear them. It is now a religion. And they say that we are coming for your children. You, your activities will not allow you to give birth, but you are coming for our children. We will, we have to push back these pushbacks. This is evil. To the extent that today, if you mention Christ, it's a crime. But LGBT band will be won in a football match. The captains put on that. And that is okay. Now, this is against our Christ. It's not about any, it is our, against our Christ. It's not about a movement uh, that is human right. It is our, against our Christ. That is why Peter and Co. said, Lord, look at their threats. And then lift up your hands. We need boldness to confront this issue. We need to push back these pushbacks. They are not stronger than our God. It's because the church is hiding. That is why they, these cowards, these cowards, either two cowards, have now become bold in. Let the church arise. And the darkness will not be able to withstand our church. Let's lift up our hands and let's allow our brother Wengam to pray. Bo Sanda. Let's hold our hands together, brothers. It's not by my Oh, it's not by power. Oh, by my spirit. It's not by my It's not by my Oh, it's not by power. Oh, by my spirit. This mountain shall be roof. This mountain. Shall be removed in Jesus' name. This mountain shall be removed in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father. You said in Joel chapter 2, Why should the hidden say, Where is our God? Why should the hidden say, Where is our God? Let God arise. Let the God of Abraham arise. The God of Jacob. The God of Isaac. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who sent down fire. Lord arise, Lord arise, let the creator of the universe, why should you watch on O oh Lord and let your enemies, let your enemy defile your generation, Lord arise, let God arise and his enemies be scattered, let your enemies be defeated, in the name of Jesus. We bow our knees, oh God, for the sake of your name, for the sake of our children and our children's children. Oh God, oh God, oh God, arise! We pray for the executive, the presidency. This is a difficult moment we know, but Lord help the executive. Let the grace abound upon them. Jesus. Grant them the courage. Amen. The courage. Amen. The strength. Amen. And the wisdom. Yes, Lord. We pray for the entire nation. Grant us the courage to say no to the enemy. Lord, to say no to the to the West who are threatening us with aid. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In those same countries, raise the godly. Raise the righteous who would defend your rights and your kingdom. Bless us as we seek your face this week. Let the heavens be opened. Come down, O God, and let light shine over darkness. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shall we be seated, please? Now, may I ask that you come here we want to take a picture and uh, those of you who are able to make it will take a photograph but today you can say thank you to the church and then please madam 
Oh, just short thank you. We will not, we will not leave you behind. Yes. All right, so I want to thank uh, my brother, the uh, resident apostle, uh, for hosting us and for this great time. Oh, let's, let's appreciate my brother here. It's been such a great time. And for each and every one of you, and especially our ministers also who came, we want to say that God richly bless you. God richly bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, our honorable members, uh, for leaving parliament and joining us. They said, should I allow him to speak? I said, no. <laughs> what is whispering to my ears? We will not allow him to speak. But you see, what politicians fear is the numbers. Yeah. We'll give them some time. I'm sure our God will listen to our prayer. I don't think that the president doesn't want to sign. I think that he doesn't know what to do. And I think that he may so also we'll be buying time. We'll give him a reason to do this. And so, uh, after some time, we'll take you off. <laughs> okay, God bless you so much. Thank you for giving us the space. God bless. God bless. All right. All right. So, they are asking leave of us. Please, they will, they will leave. All right, thank you very much. Oh, clap your hands for Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Wow, PRWC family. Let's celebrate our fathers. Let's celebrate our fathers. Let's bless. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We thank God so much for how far he has brought us in this service. Before I invite our DC secretary to bring um, the announcement, media team, if the recorded announcement is ready, kindly roll it out for us. Good morning, beloved PRWC Accra family. This is the PIWC Announcement Hub. Please lend us your attention as we update you on upcoming programs and events for the week. Let's dive into the exciting news. Once again, we would like to remind you of Chairman's Special Service held every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. on Penn TV, DSTV Channel 367, and Go TV Channel 214. So plan to join tonight for a powerful time of prayer and worship. Then on Tuesday, Chairman's virtual prayer night will take place from 10 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. Do join with Zoom ID 9882-9711-366. Passcode is Chairman. Wednesday Miracle Service is in the Dome at 5.30 a.m. Do come along with your family. The 2024 Easter Convention starts from Thursday, 28th March to Sunday, 31st March. Theme. He is risen that I may transform my world. Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 to 7. This is the program schedule. Morning sessions, Friday and Saturday is at 8 a.m. Evening sessions, Thursday to Saturday is at 6 p.m. And the climax is on Sunday at 8 a.m. While you are encouraged to spread the word, we remind you to share the program with your family and friends especially unbelievers. Virtuous Ladies Program for the month of April is scheduled for 9th April 2024 at 6 p.m. in the Dome. Theme, Beauty Maintenance. Ladies, please make it a point not to miss this. Virtuous Ladies, we live for Christ. The gold team of PRWC Accra is calling on all members to register and be part of the outreach to Poyentanga District of the Church of Pentecost, Upper West Region. 
from Wednesday 24th April to Sunday 28th April 2024. Interested persons should kindly send Brother Bismarck Edulabi a WhatsApp message on the number 0277-153-166. Funeral announcements. Memorial and funeral service for the late Beatrice Ashile Ankara, mother of our sister, Mrs. Felicia Kwam, will be held on Thursday, 4th April, 2024, at Bawe Methodist Church at 9 a.m. Memorial and funeral service for the late brother, George Afran Anan, will be held on Saturday, 6th April, 2024, at Tekum Abo. Once again, church, we encourage you to stay connected with us through our various communication channels, including our website, social media platforms at PRWC Accra, and monthly newsletters. These resources will keep you updated on all of our events, ministry meetings, and ways to get involved. That's all for now, church family. We pray that you have a beautiful week, and we look forward to seeing you at all the upcoming services and events, including the Easter Convention. Remember, you are loved and valued here at PRWC Accra. God bless you. PRWC Accra, your solution center. My name is Love Saki. Hi. Amen. Amen. Today is my first time reading announcements as church secretary. So if you want to clap, you can clap. <laughs> we'll take um, a few additional announcements. So there's a a birthday offering here. He's saying, see what the Lord has done. Thank you for adding another year to my life. I'm 71. This is the doing of the Lord, and it is wonderful in my eyes. Another Thanksgiving offering, first anniversary for the late um, Mrs. Faustina Sechibia Borque, and this is coming from the Borque family. God richly bless you. And then last Thanksgiving offering, I will praise the Lord, my maker, whilst I have breath. I thank the almighty God for adding a year to my years. I'm um, 71 years. Glory be to him. And this is coming from Dickness. Constance Labby. Is, is, is Auntie in the house? Oh, if you can rise to your feet so that we give you a wave. God richly bless you. Um, Easter Saturday, uh, the evangelism um, team will be having an evangelism outreach to the ghettos um, in and around Accra. So please make a note to join the evangelism team um, Easter Saturday. Um, probably be in the afternoon, evening. We will communicate the time, but we will have an outreach um, within the ghettos um, of Accra. Do we have um, any people who are visiting us for the first time? Any, any first timers joining us today for our service? Oh, I, I, do I see some hands at the back? First timers? Oh, you're giving me a wave. <laughs> no first timers, okay. Then, Oh, they are first time. Oh, can, can you kindly rise to your feet? Yes, and then we'll give you uh, a, a nice welcome. And by extension, if there's anyone here who would like to also give their life to Christ, um, we've heard the message from God today regarding the, the importance of Easter. And there's no better time than Easter to really give your life to Christ. So if there's anyone here who would like to give your life to Christ, you can raise your hand and we'll gladly lead you to accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. Is there anyone here like that? If there's no one here and there's anyone watching us via social media platforms and you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, just say after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I believe in my heart that you came to die for me. Today I accept you to come and live inside me. Be with me. I pledge my life to you all the days of my life. Amen. If you have said that, welcome to the body of believers. We encourage you to join a Bible-believing church near you. If you are within or close by, you can always join us in PRWC Accra. We like to say that we are the solution center. And today too, as we've heard, we are also the center of opposition to anything that is demonic. I, I thought you were going to say amen. I said we are also the center of opposition to anything that is demonic. If you believe that, shout a bigger amen. amen. And because I have the mic, just quickly, I've taken note of a few um, sentiments, uh, especially coming from the, the youth ministry. We would have time to have an open, honest, frank conversation about these topics. 
I've already um, um, sent the message across. So we would have time. We'll sit down. We have an open conversation. And I believe in my heart that when we are done, the Holy Spirit would lead all of us to the truth. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the secretary. Our media capture. Today is the first announcement he has made in the house. His first announcement. And that must go into the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> All right. I think we inform you we close at 11. So we have naming ceremony twins. Uh, and as we do that, may you receive yours. And then the family of our sister, Lakai. You see? They are also here. So I invite the family to bring the children. The Haliga family. The Haliga family. Where are they, please? To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. <laughs> Who yield that his life has atonement for sin and open the life gate that all me praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice, praise the Lord. Father, through Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Hallelujah. I think that I will humbly ask the Father to pronounce the names in order not to fall into any Pentecostal temptations. <laughs> right, with excitement on our faces, I give the microphone to the Father and mention the names according. Uh, the names is Giovanni Kekeli Haliga, Amen. and then Giovanna Clenam Haliga. Amen. Giovanni Kekeli Haliga, and Giovanna Clenam Haliga. Amen. Oh, what a name. Right, so. Giovanni Kekeli Haliga. That is your name. Given to you here in PRWC, the Dome Accra. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to keep you and give you an inheritance. We give you this name, Giovanni Kekeli Haliga, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and ask that God will hallow this name. This name, O God, will terrorize the camp of the enemy. Whatever the name is mentioned, let it dispel fear and create an enabling environment for peace, love, and prosperity. In the name of Jesus Christ, Giovanni Kekeli Hallelujah. I dedicate you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. From Giovanni, we go to Giovanna. Clemnam. Hallelujah. That is your name from today. At the end of the age, your name, Giovanna, will be mentioned. To be, to spend eternity with God in heaven. Because you will live a right and live as a servant of the Lord. I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. That is able to keep you and give you an inheritance. For your sake, your parents will experience perpetual bliss. All the days of their lives on earth. May the Lord be with you, Giovanna. Clenam, Halega. And I dedicate you, Giovanna. Clenam, I dedicate you. Hallelujah! In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let the church shout, Amen. Amen. So, 
on behalf of the church presented, I will present to them certificates of dedication and welfare donation to the children. Oh, put your hands together for Jesus and bless the name of the Lord for them. Amen. All right. We invite the family of our sister Christy, late Mama Christy Lakai. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well. Please come up, come up. It is well, it is well. It is well. Shall we please rise it if we can? Well, it is well. Let's stretch our hands towards the family and pray for them. I stand on their behalf to give thanks to God and to bless the church for your love. For ensuring smooth transition to eternity of our late mom, sister, daughter, Christiana Lakai. May the Lobby bless the church, Peter of the family. God be with you. Raise your voice, pray for the family. Pray for them. Pray for them. As I invite Eda Ose Jamra to pray for them. Lord, pray kaba so te de me hema to de me kaba. We thank you, Jesus, and bless you. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and bless you for the life that you granted our dear sister to live. We thank you for the fact that, Lord God Almighty, you touch her and cause her to accept you as your Lord, as her Lord and Savior. And Father, we thank you for, for everything that you guided her to do whilst on earth. We pray and also thank you for what happened yesterday, that we had a very successful funeral. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the family that he is leaving behind. We pray, O oh God, that your grace and your mercy shall continue to abound unto them. That you will guide them to be successful in every area of their lives, O oh God. We pray and clear every confusion, O oh God, that her departure shall bring peace and love to the family. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you very much. You may take your seat. The family, there's a Thanksgiving offering from the family. And, and today in the family house, uh, they will be sitting after church. So those of us who didn't have the opportunity to uh, attend the pre-burial service please let's pass that akutubabi on the church's platform uh, please let's go and commiserate with the family god bless you amen amen uh, one of the things i want to tell you is that this easter convention the miracles you have never seen before god will give you a shoe oh somebody says shoe time god, god will give you a shoe time of the power of resurrection now the chairman of the church has spoken to all of us and i want to reiterate that please identify two people pray go to them invite them if it is possible pick them with your vehicle or give them uber to be taking them in and out uh, even if you run out of funds come and see me i will help you for the sake of christ i mean it so that we can together mobilize ourselves for this Easter show. Are we together? We have morning session as communicated to you. And it will be prayer and prayer times. Study of the word. Teaching of the word about the resurrection in the name of Jesus. 4 p.m. we are meeting for triumphant entry. Oh, is somebody ready for that? Last year we had it at Astra International Conference Center. 
but I told Prisani Eda, Eda uh, okay, no, I won't mention Prisani. I told uh, Eda Mbrokoyu <laughs> that this is more co international conference center than those places. And so from today, as long as I remain here, triumphant entry will be organized in this house. Mm. That's why I didn't ask for his permission because if I asked him, uh, so I only told my sister Grace that it will be organized here to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, are we together? Amen. All right. So Wednesday miracle service continues unabated. We are praying for the tangible manifestation of his presence and by the grace of God, God will meet you at the point of your need. Shall we please rise? Can you sing your Hosanna as we close, please? The Hosanna or the choir? Lay Bahasa. Hold your brother, hold your sister. Hold your brother, hold your sister. Don't forget that it is Easter Booster you heard this morning. Let our King be lifted high. Hosanna, Hosanna, in the highest, let our King be lifted high. Hosanna, Hosanna. Sing with me in that understanding. Bala Hosanna. Ibe la Hosuri atabasa. Ibe la Hosuri atabatu. Ibe la Hosuri atabatu. Lift those hands if you can and open your eyes and, and listen to me. I declared here by word of knowledge some time ago here that there was somebody that the Lord has given you a certain opportunity, a path, but as you journey on that path of progress suddenly it narrowed and it was like it was restricted but as we were singing the song i saw the holy spirit is a lady the lord has opened that path oh glory i see it happening i pray in the name of jesus doors will be open i pray in the name of jesus doors will be open may every door that was closed be open now as we triumphantly enter into Jerusalem, our place of abundance. Oh Lord, give all of us testimonies to share on this Easter convention. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are blessed. You are triumphantly entering into your perpetual bliss. Shout Amen! God bless you and see you.
Hallelujah.